But the point is we elevate out of that by figuring out what you want, masterminding, writing it down, and then visualizing it to realizing it so you can manifest your heart's desire. Hey, everybody, this is Jake Sanzino, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, chef, the father, six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy. Do you know about Roger? How's it going? And soon to be opera singer. I Jake Stenziano, coming. how are you doing, Joseph? <laughs> Always making it happen, big man. Today, we have a very special guest. He is best known for co-authoring the Chicken Soup for the Soul book series. Mark Victor Hansen travels the world speaking, inspiring, and teaching leadership. So without further ado, Mark, welcome to the show. I couldn't be happier to be here. And before we began, everyone, just so you know, they were singing Italian operas to me. So I'm, I'm in a very elevated state of consciousness. I thank you. He is, he, is, he is in state. So, Mark, so many people have been touched by your amazing work. You've sold over 500 million books collectively. But what I really love is your catalyzing statement, the size of your thinking determines the size of your life. Can you expand upon that for our listeners? When I was bankrupt and upside down in 1974, I was thinking little itty bitty thoughts. And I, I built a good company. I was building geodesic domes. I've been with Bucky Fuller, the smartest guy around, Einstein's best student. That doesn't make me smart. It just means I was smart enough to get a great and inspiring teacher. And, uh, you know, I checked a book out of the library, How to Go Bankrupt by Yourself, because if, if you ask the wrong questions, you go down. If you ask the right questions, you go up. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm now building a speaking business. I'm with the world's best salesman, according to Forbes magazine. It was on the cover, Ben Feldman out of East Liverpool. And Ben and I are sitting together, and he said, Mark, you love your kids. I said, yeah. He said, you know, the difference between what you're making, 100000 a year is $400 a day times 250 work days equals 100000 is one zero. And I said, Ben, what do you mean one zero? He said, if your kid's life depended on it, could you produce $4,000 a day times 250 work days? That's a million. And I immediately changed my mind because the size of your thinking, the size of your question determines the size of your result. Because the size of your question determines back to Napoleon Hill, Think Grow Rich, the quantity of service plus the quality of service equals with a positive mental attitude equals an unlimited compensation. And why would you limit your compensation? Well, you don't understand, boys. I earn 60000 a year. I'm an employee. Well, no, no. That's what you do, but that's not who you can be because the reason you get wealthy is because who you become. Mm, wow. I think we just stopped the podcast right there. There's just enough golden nuggets in there, but we just started. And I really want to say thanks to Mark from the very, from the very beginning because you said something really that moved me. I mean, as soon as we started speaking, the, the quality of the images and the memories that you bring about, one memory that I will have for the rest of my life is that I sang opera to Mark Victor Hansen before we got on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Can't take that away. Victor Hansen liked it. <laughs> yeah. oh, that, that, that to me is irrelevant. The fact that I actually had the audacity and the nerve to do that, right? And to share that. that that's what life really is all about. Isn't it all about creating those quality memories bringing with you? Because we're all here to create money and to make money. Money's a tool. Can you expand upon that a little bit? Because that really struck a nerve with me. And I'm like, wow, that is so powerful. And that's what I've been doing for the last few years, trying to create those amazing memories. Yeah, because you make the money so you can have the experiences and create it. But most people spend so much time they get sucked into making the money. And what I said to you is that they end up living a half life rather than a full life. And I've lived, thank God, I went bankrupt and I learned what I shouldn't be doing and what I should be doing. And then I say, look, you got to figure out what you want. And that's the number one question that, that we're teaching in our book, mm -hmm. Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny, because every one of us is coded at DNA and RNA with a destiny. And what you got to do is keep asking yourself. And what you really do is number two is you got to buddy up like you two are a mastermind partner and one and one have the power of 11. And it's what President uh, Jefferson said, look, if my candle's lit and yours isn't, you light yours and mine. Doesn't take anything for mine, but makes the world fourfold brighter. But then let's go light everybody else's candle, which is what this show is about. And that's what a mastermind's about. And that's why Andrew Carnegie in his time became the richest guy because he got with Charlie Schwab Sr. and, and, a guy named Frick, and they built, you know, this empire and did great stuff. And he only had a third grade education. So some people out there watching say, well, if I had an education and I do it. Well, no, this is the education. Real education begins when commencement starts, whether it's high school or, or eighth grade or college or grad school. You do self-education, you come to these podcasts. So what happens is because education is draw out the greatness in you. So you got to figure out what you want. You got to get a team member. 
and then you got to put it in writing. It has got to be writing. What is the destination? You know, what is the destiny that you want? Because every one of you have got a destiny. Like my destiny, we were talking before we began, is to sell a billion books. Now I'm halfway there. I'm 73, but I'm going to live to be 127 because I've written it down with options for renewal. Because why, if you have a quality life, why wouldn't you want a high quantity of life? Why wouldn't you want to beat in your chest and say, look, I had the most glorious experiences. And I'll just give you one because I've had a hundred lifetimes in one, but our little grandkids, we got six grandkids that we love, cherish and adore. And our little granddaughter came over after we watched the Suns game on, on Sunday because they're really into sports, although they're really intellectually smart. But this, and she's a singer like you are. She, you'd love her. You'll sing with her. She's only six years old. One of the six year old twins, but She'll probably she, blow me away. <laughs> yeah, she, she takes an envelope and without asking Mimi or Gramby, starts drawing pictures and says, I will love you always. Now, she's spelled always without an L, but it's great because with, that's a memory that you can't buy. You can't invest. You, it, it, the point is, we live in an energy zone. People come into our house and I say, boy, you got the best feng shui. Well, my wife live, and I live in a state of love because that's what we chose to do. Because what do you want? Well, I want to be in love. I don't want to attack. I, I've been in a, you know, deceitful situations, horrific situations. All of us have. But the point is we elevate out of that by figuring out what you want, masterminding, writing it down, and then visualizing it to realizing it so you can manifest your heart's desire. I'm writing these. I'm, no, I'm writing these down because you're brilliant, you're eloquent, and I want to rip it down for the Jake and Genos of the world who are a little bit slower. What Mark is actually saying. <laughs> you're not slow a bit. I just. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. There's so much I want to pack into this. No, no, I'm talking about us as far as processing. It's very important. What Mark is talking about is live in the abundance mindset. Too many years I lived in the scarcity mindset where we're taught to, to save for retirement. But once you save your three or four million dollars in retirement, you're too scarce. You're not even going to tap into that money because you live in that scarcity mindset. That's really important to shift to the abundance. There's a pizza pie, but how big do you want that pizza pie to become? And I want everyone to write these four topics on because this is very important. What do you want, everyone? Now, write that down, number one. Number two a mastermind. Get a Jake on your team. It will revolutionize your life. I am here because of my partner, Jake. No ifs, ands, or buts. Number three, you need to write it down. Your conscious, your subconscious will be you know, enforced and will be enlightened once you write it down. And number four, visualize. You need to visualize it and see it every day. I'm writing our vivid vision statement. You know, Cameron Harold's got the book, vivid, vivid, vivid vision. Three years out, I'm writing it down. I want Jake and Gina to be X in three years. I want everyone to know about it. So share it and visualize with everyone. Is that a good recap of it, Mark, of what you were just discussing? Perfect. And, and so, because this is a real estate show, let me just do my real estate experience. So I'm bankrupt. I'm upside down. I'm starting to speak and make money and I'm writing the first book and I make a lot of money. And we'll talk about that later, but I have enough money and I'm sitting, I've got a mastermind group and two of the, the husband and wife team used to do garbage dumps on Long Island, Lindell and Steve Lair. I want them to be on your show somewhere down. They spend half their time in Mexico. So they've done really well in real estate, but they, I say, look, one of my goals is to buy some real estate. They say, well, look, as you know, we're buying fixer uppers out on Long Island, East Islip. And we just bought a $7,000 fixer upper that's a trash house and we made it good. It will sell to you for 14,000. I said, look, I'm so busy speaking because I was doing a thousand talks a year. Only Tony Robbins and I were nuts and did a thousand talks a year for the first three years in the business. Because I really wanted, you got to take massive action if you want mm -hmm. massive results. So I, I buy this house for $2,000 now, $14,000. And three years later, I sold it for $58,000. So, you know, Today, you can't do that because that doesn't exist, but proportionally, you can do it. And today, interest rates are way low. Then the interest rates were way high at 22%. So um, only mistake we made, back to the question that Jake asked, the size of your question determines size of your result. I had cash flow. I had great credit come back. I had, I did what I teach now is that you buy two houses and one car in a family. You don't buy two cars in one house, right? And mm -hmm. stuff like that. But we should have bought the whole town of East Islip and, and Lindell and Steve and I were down in, in East Lima Harris less than a month ago. We were on vacation with them because they're our closest friends. The, the point is everyone, you got to think bigger because when the opportunities come, and I think we're about to have 
real estate tip over again, which we can talk about, but, and, and I don't want that, but it's going to happen. It has to happen. There's just too much leverage in the marketplace and a lot of other problems of inflation. So when that happens, you want to be able to, you want to mentally be ready and write down, look, I want five houses. I want 10 houses. That'll make me financially self-sufficient, whether you want to have 10,000 cash flow a month, 20 or a hundred or more, whatever it is, it has to be in writing. Spiritual law says, write a thing and make it clear, it shall. That's definite certainly be established on you. Now, I know the number I want, which is going to be such a high number, most of you wouldn't believe it. So I'm, I'm not here to say, hey, he's a Mark the greatest. What I'm here to say is you've got greatness in you, but you've got to use principle. And what we've talked about are four principles that are interaccommodative. They always work and they work for anyone. It doesn't matter your color, your age, your sex or anything. It just works. Mm. Let me ask you, this may seem pretty obvious to you, but how have you been able to attract other people who are smarter than you, who are more talented than you? You're part of the mastermind. How have you been able to do that from meeting Bucky to going through the ages to going throughout your entire life? How has that happened? I love that question. First of all, I've never been asked that question before. It's a magnificent question. And, and the point is the law of attraction is that you set up, you, you become the attractor factor. And you work on yourself full time, which is what you said. You've got to read the books and study the stuff and listen to the audios and watch the podcasts that are life changing. And you got to ask yourself, well, who do I want to hang with? And I'll just do the Bucky experience just real quick. So I'm in graduate school. I'm going to become a doctor of physiology, or at least I'm so wowed by physiology. Now, I was at the university at the time when all the guys got fired at Harvard, Wharton, Yale, and Stanford for one simple reason or 65. This is the 60s. And I had the number one physiology teacher in the world, the guy who trained all the astronauts who the guys that are still alive, I'm on the board of back to space because I really think we got to go in space. And I, I love that Branson went yesterday and Bezos is going in a couple of days and, and Alon's going after that. So, I'm, you know, I'm really keen and I'm good friends with this 87 year old astronauts, which I met because of Bucky. Bucky was on the board of, of NASA back in the old days. But my physiology professor, Dr. Alfred Richardson, the guy that every medical doctor read, I, I'm in awe of this guy. I'm in his office every day hanging. And he said, look, you got to go hear the smartest guy on the planet. I said, Al, that's you. He said, no, man, I get goosebumps telling you this. He said, look, the smartest guy on the planet right now, as far as I can tell, and it, in Time Magazine said, so oh, Buckminster Fuller, Dr. Fuller. So I said, well, what are we going to do? Well, he said, he's teaching to 5,000 kids today. We got front row seats. You're sitting with me and cancel the rest of your day. I said, Listen, if you're with a really smart guy and a guy says, we're going somewhere, you just go. Right? So I, I sit in front of Bucky and Bucky starts out saying, we're going to talk about synergetic, energetic, geometry, cosmogony, cosmology. And he went through 10 words and I had a four point by that time. I almost failed out of school because I was, I was good at party. I got an A plus at party. When I got there. And they said, young Mr. Hanson, do you think you ought to leave school? Because you're failing in here. And I got D minus average. So I said, no, 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 I'll stop drinking and chasing women. I can, I think I could do this. And, and uh, now I have a four point, but I'm now, the big word is sophomoric. I thought, I have got this one down, baby. <laughs> now all of a sudden, Bucky, who's really wise, is taking me through stuff I'd never heard before. And I went, whoo whoa, he's really, you know, he had 15 doctorates at Harvard, had all these great inventions like geodesic domes, Damascian cards, floating cities, and had written 40 books. And I went over to his office that afternoon. I begged. I said, please, let me just be a research assistant. And then I got to go through school for him with seven years travel around the world. And it just blew my mind. But the, back to the point, this seems so simplistic. It seems self-serving, but every one of us has got to ask. And you got to ask everybody and everybody's not going to say yes. you got to make yourself rejection proof when you ask, because if you'd said no, I would have kept coming back because you got to, you got to have Teflon, right. And say, well, look, I can't buy that house, but there's some house out there that I can buy. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody out there that will mastermind with me. That's smarter than I am more successful or more achieving in real estate than I have ever even dreamt of being. So Mark, Am I over answering your question? Not at all. Do you also think you employ the seek to serve mentality as well? Because you're not out there looking for stuff for yourself. You're out there seeking to help Buckminster Fuller before you actually go on and say, I'm going to just try to get whatever I can from you. Because that's a uh, simple thing to say. Yeah. And, and Bucky was a terrible salesman. And, and uh, because I'm really good at it, I've been selling since I was nine years old. He, he had the world come into Southern Illinois University, Carbondale, which they call Carbon Hole because it was just this anomaly of a place. But we had 
68,000 students going there and I was a student leader. But Bucky, Bucky um, was so amazing. He'd say, look, I've got Watson, uh, the, the, the guy just created DNA and RNA, Watson and Crick coming and I can't meet with him for six hours so more. Would you take him on a tour and really entertain him for the next six hours? Cause I'm stuck here uh, doing something really uh, urgent and I can't change and I go, you want me to be with the two guys that just got the Nobel Prize? You're telling them to cool their jets and they're not getting to come to you and you want me to talk to them. We had a wonderful time. We had a magnificent time. And did I expect that? No, but that's what I'm saying about getting memories that are cherishable. And then we had Glenn A. Oles, Dr. Oles, the guy who came into Kent State when that blew up. But Glenn you know, had a wait for Bucky too. And, and, I, and he wrote me like a three-page letter. And I thought, God, I'm a... 18 or 20, I'm a 21 year old kid, Bucky's 71 and I'm getting to be with the best minds in the world. I'm going, and I get to ask him everything. And, and by the way, I said, you write it down, but you also got to take copious notes when you're with the people. But nowadays, even better than copious notes, every one of us sometimes are not paying enough attention. You need to have your cell phone ready and do instant phone because some of you are going to meet people and you go, I can't take notes fast enough. So do that and then get it transcribed at Otto, otter.ia or no notes or whatever you do, but make sure you codify this. Make sure you've got your own archives. Make sure you keep a record. Like I've got now, thanks to hanging out with Bucky, I got 50 years of journals. And most of my wife said when we moved one time to Scottsdale long ago, said, are you going to keep all those? I said, yeah, someday I'm going to need them. I'm going to finish my biography, Mark on Mark, which I, <laughs> I yeah. Hey, Let me you, ask you know, Real quick on this, I want, I want to, for the younger kids that are out there listening to this, because there's, and I've heard this from more than, than one person, that there's this underlying theme amongst some young people about unpaid internships, and, and that they're, you know, people are being taken advantage of, and it's not a, not a good thing. You know, I don't know if Mark got paid for his internship there. I, you know, I kind of doubt it, but he may have. But the amount of value that he got in return by providing value to Bucky, I just want that to sink in because I think it's, it's, it's a slippery slope sometimes and, and the mentality uh, sometimes of our younger folks. So you, everyone needs to realize the value is in that experience and what was, you know, basically transcended onto Mark by being with such a high level person. I just want that to sink in because I have heard that and I think it's dangerous, but uh, you know, hey, I'm Mark. Yeah. Well, first of all, there's no free lunch. So the, yeah. the principle is, the, the unpaid internship is apprenticeship is, is back at, uh, we were talking about, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo before the show began in, in Florence and in Milano. And, and those guys have a lot of scribes helping them. Well, obviously I helped Bucky, but when I helped Bucky, I, I built my Rolodex. That's the other thing we got to do. Yeah. I, this is point number five. I have 4,886 names in my phone. Now, most people, the average person has less than 200. They don't know anyone. And if you don't know enough people, you can't expand enough brain cells. Look, we're all born over-endowed at birth with 18 billion brain cells is the number I'm told. If it's a trillion, like my friend Deepak, Dr. Deepak Chopra says, God bless. But it doesn't work until the conscious makes the decision, what do I want, imploded deeply, penetratingly into subconscious. When we wrote Ask, we said, look, there are only three channels asking. Ask yourself, ask others, and ask God. And when you ask yourself, what do I want? Or in this case, because we're talking about destiny, God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? 400 times, push back sleep. And when you wake up, make sure you've got a notepad so you can write down exactly what, and you got to wake up then and tell your sweet again, hey, I just listened to Mark Victor Hansen, and some people say he's nuts, and that's okay, but he's a pretty successful nut if he's he owns businesses and all kinds of stuff. So you write it down because your inner knower knows. Your inner knower has the way to go conscious, subconscious, superconscious, God conscious. Those are the four models that I believe. Now, there's other people model it deeper and that, but I want to make everything so simple you can't miss it. And, and when Jack and I were looking for the right title for Chicken Soup for the Soul in our respective homes, I was in Newport Beach at that time and he was in, in Santa Barbara, we said 400 times, mega best selling title, mega best selling title, mega best selling title. It's before cell phones, it was eight, 1989. Jack calls me at 2.30 in the morning, 2.58 in the morning, wakes up the whole house. We had, as I told you, my daughter was becoming a vet. And we had 88 animals on one acre, which is way too many, but she just couldn't help but heal stuff. So it was sort of amazing. But Jack said, chicken soup. I said, for the soul, we both got goosebumps. Now, back to asking and rejection, got to tell yourself, if somebody rejects you, N-E-X-T, four 
letters that are clean. You just say next. Somebody else is going to say yes. So we got turned on 144 times. We kept asking, but Jack and I knew we had the right title, right? Chicken soup or this whole why? Because your grandmother and mother gave it to you and you're sick to get well. We thought America, the soul of America was sick. What we discovered is the soul of the world is sick. Mm-hmm. 144 okay. times, Jake. 144. It's hard to get multifamily deals, Gino. It's hard <laughs> to buy apartments right now. And the problem yes. is, is that we don't know anyone that just bought one apartment deal because once they got that first deal, it starts to snowball and they start getting them done. It's that rejection and that resistance in the beginning where if he would have quit after 139, there'd be no chicken soup for the soul. We wouldn't be sitting here right now. Mm-hmm. But- it's also hard to buy mobile home parks, which I'd like to own a couple. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Mark, why did you write the book? Ask, what was the, you know, the sitting down and having all that knowledge and you know, chicken soup. You're such a busy person to put pen to paper and say, I'm going to dedicate a year of my life to write this book. What was the genesis for it? So Chris and I have traveled around the world to 80 different countries, met some 7 million people, and they're wonderful people, joyous people, well-educated people, good personalities, good attitude. But we discovered the question, the difference between somebody who succeeds a little and somebody who's vastly successful is one thing and one only. That is, they know how to ask, mm-hmm. A-S-K to G-E-T, what they want. And what they do is they get their ask in gear. And so we wrote up everything where we overcame every obstacle because all of us are going to have obstacles with holes. All of us are going to have deals go south. Everyone's going to get turned down on buying a, a single family or a multifamily or a multi or a old people's home, which is one of the booming businesses in real estate. I'm told by my friend Ken McElroy, you know, everybody's got something going. And, and like even with him, with 10,000 units, he gets turned down trying to buy stuff, which is, you go, who would turn that guy down? I mean, you just, <laughs> uh, it, it just so, so the point is, you got to say, hey, wait a second. Everybody else goes through the same trauma, torment, travail. You're going to go over, under, around, or through and get to the other side. So we decided that asking was it. So we wrote everything we knew. Then we did all the university studies. Then we interviewed the 26 superstar askers. And two of them are in real estate, which we can talk about if you want to know. Uh, I assume you read the book before we did this interview, but if you didn't, I'll mm-hmm. still tell you the story. <laughs> I'd love to hear the story. Well, you have the seven roadblocks in there. If you remember yeah. the seven roadblocks, let's go through them. And I want, as everyone's listening to this, can you identify with one of those roadblocks? And if you can, does it have to be a roadblock for you? So I think that's really important to, to discuss those roadblocks. What you're saying is you got to hold up the mirror and look at your own roadblocks because yes. all of us have some of them all yes. the time, some of them. Yeah. Right, it's sort of like what Abe Lincoln said: some of them all of the time, all of them some of the time, and, and most of us don't know any of it any of the time. Essentially, I'm reiterating what Uncle Abe said, but or President Abe said. But the seven are real simple. Number one is self worthfulness. Mm-hmm. Right? Am I worthy to ask? Well, I'm not worthy to go ask Bucky Fuller if I can work for him. Right? And that's where most people would have stifled themselves. Yeah. Right? Poo right in the heart. Well, what that is. <laughs> Next is doubt. Well, I, I don't know if I have anything to contribute back to what you said, because, you know, you want to have a spirit of being a giver when you're going to ask somebody, not only a taker, right? Because takers get excommunicated pretty quick. Next is fear, which is a word that we all know, false evidence appearing as real. And we all know that Napoleon Hill wrote all the fireside chats for FDR, like you have nothing to fear but fear itself. And we're in a place like that right now. And fear shuts us down. Neurologically, fear contracts us. That's why you got to listen to positive stuff in the morning, like the stuff I do, or watch our your videos, my videos on YouTube, and all that, and read positive stuff before you go to sleep, because your state of mind creates your state of result. And if you're in fear, you're contracting. If you're in faith and love, you're expanding, and and you're going to expand exponentially, which we'll get to a little bit later. Next, you've got pattern paralysis, meaning you do something and expect some new result. Well, that's Einstein said, you know, if you keep doing the same thing and expect new result, you're cuckoo, meaning crazy, right? The next one is disconnection. And the levels of disconnection are now mostly cell phone and, and uh, screen based because we're unplugged at levels you can't believe. The next one is excusology. And, and my oldest brother came to visit us after his wife died and he'd just been gold uh, on a vacation looking for gold up and panhandling for gold up in Alaska and found a little bit. He's at my house. We have a greatest time. We, we, all my brothers, I've got four, have gotten along phenomenal. Anyhow, so I drive him to the airport at 530 in the morning and I say, you know the way around the airport, thinking 
because I go, I've traveled up until COVID a quarter million miles a year, you know, for 44 years. So I've traveled around the world and got, you know, every million mile club and every airline. So um, I thought he knew his way around the airport. And I said, big brother, you okay? He said, I got this. His wife had died. I didn't realize she dragged his butt through the airport. And, you know, he was too good. And, and so I said, oh, don't worry about me. I know my way. We, at, at Phoenix airport, we got, they wear purple jackets. They're all over the dang place. I'll tell you anything. It is a big airport and it's expanding because we've taken in 900,000 new residents and we're the fastest growing city, I guess, in America, right now, Maricopa County. Anyhow, um, in the afternoon, I call his daughter, Jody, and I say, she said, Uncle Marky, don't you know? And I go, don't I know what? I said, your big brother sitting in the airport still. I said, what? I said, I took him to the airport. I said, do you want me to walk you to the gate? Because I know my way around airport. I got airport protocol down and everybody in the airport goes, hi, Mark. You know, it's one of those. <laughs> Chris and Lamar, hey, you're here again. Um, in the old days. Today, you know, we don't, we travel a lot, but not as much. Anyhow, so I said, no, he sat in the airport for 13 hours. Now, if he had called me, I would have told him how to get to a gate. If he called me, I would have got him on a new plane. If he called me, I would have brought him back to my house and we would have been more great meals and more hikes, you know, cause this is a great place or Arizona's a fun place to visit. Just, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. And then he ultimately got pneumonia cause he it, ah. it broke down his spirit cause he's way older than I am. And, and it just, you know, and died, but it, which is, and I did his funeral, but it, it, it is that excuses are not okay. Any, any one of us that goes through it, you either get excuses or results. So you got to decide, hey, wait a second. I'm going to transcend my excuse. I'm going to go higher in my level of consciousness, look down on the problem and figure out how to solve the problem. And if I can't, I'm going to my mastermind and I'll say how to do it. And so back to your first question about masterminding, when we had that mastermind with Stephen and Linda Lair, we also had a guy ready to get a divorce, Rod Richard. And, and uh, he said, I'm going to show my ex-wife, I'm going to cut that money in half because she's having an affair with that guy. I said, no, 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 no. Lock her down. You've been back then, he was making a lot of money, like 180 grand a year. And I said, just lock her in at, at getting half of that, right? And then you just, we'll just double or triple or quadruple your income. He said, man, I never thought of that. That's why it's important to hold up a mirror and ask mastermind questions to get over to the seven roadblocks because he was, I'm going to show her. No, 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 no. Sure. You're going to hurt yourself. Does that make sense? Yes, well, I think, it does. I think when you get that tense and, and upset about things, your brain's probably working at half capacity anyways. It's not functioning properly. So reaching out to the network has got to be so powerful, especially in those tense times. And Mark, to get you on this podcast, for instance, if I was by myself, I may have said to myself, I'm not worthy enough. I'm not good enough. But I've got my partner there and I can't let my partner down. I can't make that excuse for my partner. I'll make the excuse for myself. But I can't make the excuse for my partner. So I'm like, Jake, should I ask him? He's like, 100%. And I, and, and I went and I asked him. So there's no excuse. But if on your, on your own island by yourself, all of a sudden you're making all the excuses and I'm not worthy. Well, I've got to be worthy because I've got to put food on my partner's table. And that makes that sometimes we self-sabotage ourselves. But I'm not going to go sabotage his family. So that may be a way that people don't want to do but that that really works for me really really well i want to do the best i can for the jake and gino team i have employees and i have the team members here so i want to get better so if i am blaming myself i look at them and say how can i get better for them that, that's what i use that's why the mastermind for me and using partners at that level pulling that lever really helps me out and holds me accountable not only did everything you said is accurate but pulling that level level what it does is it ups your mental coherence it up your mental faithfulness because mm -hmm. Jake's having faith in you and you're having faith in Jake and then the staff's having faith. Some of these two guys are in a mastermind and they're going to make enough money to pay all of us and still make a profit, which is the trouble is today we've got to get kids learning free enterprise, which one of the books I wrote is the richest kids in America. And I taught all, I interviewed 21 kids that made a million before their 19, one made 500 million. So the wow. point is you, you got some people that will come to you and say, well, you guys are, forgive me for saying it, but to a, an 18 year old, you guys look old, right? And I look ancient. The mm -hmm. point is your A is A, you're not old and B is B, they're not that useful, right? At 18, in the old days, you had to start earning your wealth at 12 years old, right? When my dad was in Denmark, you know, and came to America at 14, he had no choice. He had to go figure out how to pay for everything. Um, so, and then mm -hmm. let's do the other end of it. I wrote a book with Art Linkletter about you know, when he was 98 years old, right? The funniest guy in America at the time. He had kids say the darndest thing, people are funny, house party. 
but Art and I traveled around together and were wonderful and met good mastermind partners and, and loved each other. And, and before he died three days, he knew he was going to life beam off because he missed his wife too much. He called Crystal and I and said, I want you to bring your whole family. I said, you want everyone in my family? That's a lot of people. He said, yep, I want them all up here. What he wanted to do is do a final lecture and say how much he loved us and all that. And that's what a mastermind is, is that they love you so much, they'll, you'll even be with them and hold their hand when they transition out of physical form, which is just a frequency change, right? And, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do other one bonus point because I raise all the blood for the Red Cross. It's one of the charities I believe in. Give all your dang blood away when you're dead. You don't need it, even whether you're being <laughs> cremated or and give your eyes away and your heart and liver and all that. Because this is chilly. Make sure you're dead. But you know, <laughs> this, is, this, this body isn't. It, That's the key, it, everybody. <laughs> you got to make sure you're dead first. <laughs> wow. I, I'm pretty sure someday I will be dead. And, and it's written in my will and my wife's will. And we've asked our kids and grandkids. Grandkids don't understand it. But, you know, contribute because we're out of blood in America again. And it's we're asinine. We got 1% of us dying. That's enough blood to, to, to make all the blood in the hospitals, all the I can go through it in deep because I understand this, but mm -hmm. do you see the benefit of this yes. thing? And you say, what does that got to do with asking? I am asking you to be a contributor. I'm asking you to give blood. Why? During most people's lifetime, they're going to need three pints. Therefore, if you want blood in the inn, meaning the hospital, when you get there, you'd better put some blood in in advance. Or when you come up dehydrated, not able to get any, you're called DEAD. Does that make sense? Here we go. We're, get, we're challenging everybody today. We're directly asking, don't give three, give six. All right. The, <laughs> the big ask from today's show, get out there and give six pints. Yeah, and call 800 Give Life. Find out where you can give blood. It, 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 you live longer when you give blood. You can give blood up to every 58 weeks. You're, you get rid of the old blood. Your body quickly builds new blood. You're younger, more flexible. And, you know, I give regularly. So I, I really believe in this kind of stuff. So, but you're, you asked about asking. Of course, I'm asking to be philanthropic, but not only for me, I don't get, hopefully I'll never need any blood. I've never needed it, but I've given it and saved a lot of people's lives. So, right? And I want everyone to consider you, it. You've done an amazing job describing, you know, how you ask. In the book, is there any, how do you ask? You've done an eloquent job, but to put it into my mind, like, what are the steps? What should I be doing? Other than saying, oh, yeah, just go out and ask, but how do you ask? Because it can be intimidating. I'm asking somebody to invest $50,000 of their hard earned money into my real estate deal. How do I ask? I mean, I know how to ask that person because I have to be faithful. I have to be honest. I have to have them trust me. I have to be able to solve a problem for them. But can you expand upon that a little bit? First of all, I, everything you've done is exactly accurate. So you, first of all, you got to know exactly where you are. The stage is, where am I? And then all the little questions you ask, the reflective journey of who am I? What do I want to do? Do I have the courage to, can I simulate asking, you know, a couple hundred times? So I go to deep, deep consciousness. So when I go ask him, it's just already done already. And, and the lawyer who wins every case that we had in our book, is a, the mayor of, of the city of Lancaster, California. His name is Rex uh, Paris, and, and Rex is a genius, but Rex wins $100 million cases and owns a lot of real estate because he has 76 attorneys attack him, whatever the uh, opponent's gonna do. When, he, when all those kids died drinking energy drinks, which is like six uh, cups of coffee in one, and they'd stay awake three days in Vegas and died. Mm -hmm. You know, they wouldn't get any money. So he said, no, no, I'm going to take those class actions who they're allowed for. And, and that's the point. But he knew exactly who he was, and he asked every question. The second is, you know, where do I want to go to the nth degree? And how far do I want to go? How high do I want to go? How much real estate do I want to buy? Who do I want to have invest with me? And how far do I want to go? And back to, because I, Richard Branson and I like each other so much, I like, I'm amazed yesterday. What did he do? He trained for three months. He, he and I are exactly the same age, right? 73. Is it he figured out how to get totally physically fit to go into space yesterday and, and did a perfect job, right? Then you, to the nth degree, what does he want to do? He wants to create space, not just for him, but space for everybody and space to harvest all the resources we're going to be short of before, before very long, which is rare metals, because your computer and your cell phone use rare. It's one of the reasons for all kinds of stuff. And then the third thing is in back to what you asked is what is the action step I got to go take to ask somebody to give $50,000. And if you have 
a really convincing simulation in that first step and then you visualize it to realize it, materialize it again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and again ad nauseum. So you've been there. There's no surprises. Then the third thing is you just go take the action and somebody out there has got 50 grand. As a matter of fact, I, you guys will agree right now, there's more money out than ever before. I mean, we've got 7 trillion, that's spelled with a T. And remember, a billion's a billion, a thousand billion's a trillion. We got seven times that. There's enough mm -hmm. money to make everyone worth something like a hundred million dollars so a lot of people have money sitting on the sidelines now and they need somebody like you to come in ask to get to get them to invest in it if you really want to do something right you know read our book ask go over it with your mastermind partner and then whoever you're going to ask bring a copy of the book and say look i don't know that i believe what i heard on this great podcast with the boys uh jake and gino but i want to ask you I'm a neophyte asker and, and make yourself vulnerable and say, look, I've never asked anyone for 50 grand before, but right now I've got this property that is probably going to go up in value twice because it, here's the inflation, the now inflation, and here's the long-term inflation. Anybody who doesn't believe there's going to be long-term inflation is not paying attention. It's like that <laughs> house I bought for 14,000. I sold three years later for 58,000. Right now we got rent. I think you guys believe in inflation. You do teach that, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of inflation out there. Yes. Yeah. It's, here's why you got to have long-term inflation. It's going to happen. And if you tell the people this, they get it immediately. You say, hey, look, our government's in deep debt. Depends on what you want to believe. But let's say we're uh, $7 trillion in debt. At 1%, we owe $700 billion a year, mm -hmm. right? If the, if the Federal Reserve goes to 2%, it's twice that we bankrupt America. So mm -hmm. what does that mean? That means they cannot raise the rates. That means we should be yeah. buying more real estate because real estate has to go up in mm -hmm. in price, mm -hmm. right? The real value we're not going to talk about. The but people the that have bought assets over these last, you know, how many ever years with the, the mega printing of the money that's been going on, those are the people that have gotten extremely rich. That's mm -hmm. where that transfer of wealth has come from, the people that have held assets. So I think it's very important for everyone to realize that. Mark, last yeah. long answer before you transition to Jake. If you look back on your life, what was the one big mistake that you made that really held you back and took you off you know, your, your path to growth? I think I didn't ask the right question back you know, when I was with Bucky. I got so enamored of Bucky, I tried to be Bucky rather than Mark. Mm. And you can't be anything but a real good you. I can't be a Gino. I can't be a Jake. I can't be you know, anybody else. And once you really get back to that first thing, what do you want? I want to be the best iteration of Mark. But Mark's got enormous potential. Jake's got enormous potential. Gino's got enormous potential. Not, and I don't care how much of your potential you're using. The question is, you need to secretly go inside the secret place of the most high and say, okay, Big G, what is my full potential in fitness? What is my full potential in relationship with my wife and my kids and my family and my brothers, my sister? What's my full potential in buying real estate? Because any one of you can buy a lot of real estate. Like one of the people I just wrote a book with uh, is uh, Mitzi Purdue. Now she owns the biggest chicken company in the world, 22 million chickens a week, and she's wonderful. But her dad started Sheridan Inns during the Depression, during the time nobody else wanted anything during the Depression. So he just absorbed all those assets. And the way he did it is he found a cash flow thing. His name is uh, Ernest Henderson. I got this, I've written this story, so I love this story. But he was buying oculars, micro, uh, uh, binoculars before they became available from mm -hmm. Germany. They had the glasses down and he would, he would just look in the sky and go like this and people would walk up to him and start to buy it. And he made enough money to buy his first little hotel and then he bought another hotel. And then during the depression, he bought 400 hotels because everybody's thrown away their assets and he never fired an employee. He said, look, we're going to have meetings all the time. We're going to talk about how you're going to be excellent at what you do. I'll be excellent as a buyer of hotels, but you got to be excellent as a maid you got to be excellent as a manager. you got to be excellent when Jake comes in to stay at our hotel with his wife because this is the only vacation they're going to get. And we're going to make this hotel excellent. You, the painter, are going to paint better than you've ever painted before. We're And, and Sheridan Inns went mm -hmm. during the Depression. Did you know that story? Didn't know I did not. No. It's never the right time to start, you know. Everyone's always got an excuse, so it's great. All right, gang, let's Wait a take second. a second. I'm not doing that now. It's a depression. Come on, Jake. <laughs> I love that. Let's take a quick time out to hear from our sponsor. Are you looking for ways to improve your life? 
Here at Jake and Gino, our mission is to empower students through financial education and the vehicle of multifamily investing. Yes, Jake. We agree that a person with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. We've created our proprietary three-step framework, buy right, manage right, and finance right, that we teach to our community. This framework, along with education, our one-on-one -on -one mentorship, on-site boot camps, and the amazing community has propelled our students to massive success. We've all been there. We've had so many students that have been able to shift their mindset, overcome limiting beliefs, and set a clear path to achieve their goals. Whether you're currently fixing and flipping, wholesaling, or buying single-family rentals, and you know that multifamily investing is the right vehicle for you, I encourage you to visit jakeandgino.com forward slash apply to schedule your complimentary consultation with our team. And I want to let you know this isn't a high pressure sales call. It's really just a discovery call to get to know each other better and see if we're a good fit for working together. And if for any reason we're not a good fit, our team has tons of resources we will share with you to help you along your journey. If you're ready to stop spinning your wheels, go to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply and schedule your call now. All right, we are back. Mark, I need to know, what is your best habit for success? My best habit for success is, is uh, I am really, I've never been asked that question before. You guys have asked two questions today I've never heard before. That's why I love doing all these podcasts around the world because <laughs> it forces me to think. But I would tell you that I am massively, I'm a superstar at creative. And, and that's why so many people have me on the boards of their companies because they all see the problem and I only think solution. And solution comes out of being positive. Solution comes out of making sure you spend your time in positivity. Like, and, and I'll just give you an example of that. My wife and I, every day, I'll tell you why we did it and then what we do. But uh, we're sitting when we're falling in love at the Costa Mesa, California, at Mother's Market having a nice green meal. And the guy sitting next to us, a man of the cloth with a white collar, and he turns out to be 92. And he leans in and says, I see you guys are really in love. I said, thank you very much. He said, do you want to know what the secret of a happy marriage? I said, boy, do I want to know yeah. that. I didn't know it before, but I now want to know it. <laughs> he, said, he said, you've got to pray out loud together with your spouse each and every day, in the morning and at night. Now, Chris and I had prayed in groups. We prayed at church. And, you know, I've been everywhere in the world. So temple, ashram, synagogue, and mosque, all that stuff. But never with your sweetie kins. And uh, so we do that for an hour every morning, did this morning. And, and what happens is it elevates your spirit. And he said, you know, I'm head of Billy Graham Ministries. I'm 92. For 70 years, I've been running this. And that's the only thing we know that keeps marriages together. If you pray out loud together, and we go, wow, way cool. And so we do that. And that elevates your consciousness in my, now, you know, Guinness Book of Records said I'm a world's best-selling author and the world's best title guy and a couple other things. And they've given me all these awards, but my wife has caught the contagion of being a title master. And we've got all the stuff she wants to write now, too. And in the beginning, when we were falling deeply in love long, long ago, you know, I'd say, that's a great title. And she said, how do you see that stuff? And you just, because you see what you're looking for, right? Because life at some level is perception. So if you perceive that you're going to figure out the best titles ever, you go out and find the best titles ever. Does that make sense? It does. I, I think people see the world as they are, not as it is. That's the problem. You're seeing it through your own lens and through a higher level of consciousness because you're open, you're, you're, you're positive, you don't have the scarcity mindset. So that all blends in through years of experience and being able to see it through that The Mark binoculars. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and what I want to do is have everybody take off the blinders. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, no, no, Mark, all you want to do is sell more books. Yeah, I want to sell yes. more books. But, is there anything wrong with that? <laughs> I don't think it is. By the way, you invest in, in one of my books anywhere. And if you only got a dollar, you go to the, the dollar store, which the industry used to say, Mark, you're screwing up the whole marketplace by selling books for a dollar. No, I'm doing three stories in one little book, but I sell 15 million a year and I get 15% of that. And the people that go in the dollar store and buy one of my books, they will never go in Barnes and Noble. They will never darken the door of Books a Million or Hudson or any other. I, I name I name every you know distribution center. They don't go to Amazon. They don't even have a computer. So what I'm saying is, all of us got to serve the markets that aren't being served. And then something you guys haven't talked to, and I don't know that you build houses at all, but we got to get more real estate built just for every reason right now. Yes. Yeah. 
100%. big challenge. Well, and, and you saw everything that happened during COVID. So, you know, all the supply chains got shut down 10 to 20% production. Money gets flooded into the system. Demand goes up. It was the complete inverse of what people were expecting. And now we're in the situation that we are now with the, the inflation. It's just kind of crazy. So it's going to be an uphill battle for sure. And I completely agree with that. Um, so just kind of going back to the book a little bit, you know, I'm listening to everything that, that we're talking about. And, and Gina was asking about, well, how do you actually ask? And I, I think I've had this epiphany since you've been on. It's more so the mindset, right? It, it's more so, you know, sometimes getting the nerve and, and where to go and asking yourself the right questions and who should I be asking? Um, can you can you address some of the resistance, I think, because I, I feel like the resistance is a, is a huge component of it, that people are fighting an internal demon um, in, that, that's really holding them back. Can you expand upon that? Well, first of all, let's assume, first of all, I've never heard it articulated that way, and you're correct. The, in, the demon is your demon, your yeah. fear of asking, your yes. doubt of asking, your sense of self-worthfulness of asking. And when you get over your own demon, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold up a mirror. Everybody that's listening to us, the three of us, give them full permission, 100% permission to ask anyone, anything, anywhere, anytime, for any reason, assuming it is an integrous ask and it'll benefit them and you and the world. How's that? Yeah. Now, that, that's a pretty big ask. But the point is, you can ask for anything as long as it's not going to hurt anyone, right? You're you're not violating the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do on you, ask unto others what you'd have them to ask you. I mean, if I need to, back to the $50,000, if I need $50,000 and I come to you and I say, look, I got this plum of a property, right? It's, it's 10 units, 100 units, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But if you put up the $50,000, this thing is going to go up because what I am is I'm a fixer upper. I'm going to go in and repaint it. I'm going to clean out all the people that had their cats and you know in the room and peed all over the wall i'm going to get rid of Subfloor all that is smell. coming out <laughs> what? I said the yeah. subfloor is coming out right yes that's right we're going to put on a dang roof on this thing and this yeah. thing's going to last and it's going to be a cash cow for the next 20 years now do you want to be part of that and if you do then this is a great investment if you don't um and you say no to me uh two things number one is i will do it and i i'll accept it but number two is do you know somebody who would like to invest in this deal? Everybody knows somebody with excess cash. Mm -hmm. That's great. Excellent. Love that. We talked a lot about books. We mentioned Ask and, and the Chicken uh, Soup books, but you know, Gina and I love to read, and I'm sure you do as well. Is there any books that you've read in the last year that added uh, value to your life? You'd like to share? Uh, I, I, just like I say, yeah, uh, I wrote a book called You Have a Book in You. I want everyone to write a book, so that's and then they can go to my website and get that if they want. But the, the added value there, there's a book to, that teaches consciousness better than any by a guy named Neville called Resurrection. And uh, his, the full name is Neville Goddard, but he only goes by Neville. And it's a magnificent book and it'll uplift you. And, and yeah, do I want people to read? Yeah, because my cliche is that if you are read, you're freed. And here's the question I'm asking myself is that look, four billion people on the planet right now cannot read, and so they can't be free. So I want everybody that's listening, just like give blood, I'm gonna ask you to teach somebody that can't read, even in America, even these illegals that are coming in here, teach them how to read so they understand that there's a possibility. And if you really have a chance to travel, and most of us in real estate are gonna travel, and I want you to travel more, and you're gonna to go to LDCs, less developed countries, whether it's India or whether it's Ghana, or what, I don't care where it is, right? Teach somebody to read while you're there. And when you read the first story and ask, the story of Michaela, the fable, which we're trying to make into a movie right now, because we want everyone to be inspired at the depth of their soul to just teach one person to read. And if 4 billion of us that can't read teach 4 billion of us that can't read, the whole world goes up. And, and every one of us that gets conscious, just like that candle lighting thing we told you by President Jefferson, we can really light the world up. And But my position, and I think you guys, is it, let's get everybody to read. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, any project that you're excited about right now before we get a, a beautiful recap from our singer Gino up there in the, in the top left corner on my screen? <laughs> That's a wonderful statement. I just, I want everyone to, to get our book, read our book. I want them to uh, get to actually and go over every question in the book because we've had this COVID confinement cocoon and people are scared and shut down yes. and, and in 
involuting rather than evoluting. And, and we're here to evolve and, and survival of the fittest said, all you gotta do is learn to be adaptive and questions are the adaptive tool because God only gave us two things that nobody else in the animal kingdom has, the ability to ask and the ability to imagine, which we've covered a little bit of today. And we can do it more in the future. But if you'll go over that, you will transform your life from good to phenomenally good. You'll find how you're unique and you, your life will inevitably create the memories we promised at the beginning of the show. But you really need to go over our book. And I don't care if you do it in audio. I don't care if you do it in video. I don't care if you read it, but get it and go through it. And then join our book club, which is free. Askthebookclub.com. Askthebookclub.com is totally free. And Chris and I are personally teaching how to become what we're calling a master asker. So you are a fearless asker. And so you get on the path to your destiny because it's only asking that'll get you on the path to your destiny. Before we get to askthebookclub.com, what is the best place to buy the book? Uh, you can buy it almost any bookstore right now. Let me, but honestly, what has happened is, is we keep selling a lot of books and I've never got to see this before. When I called our publisher, and you don't call big New York publishers on a Saturday morning when they're out in Montauk or Cape Cod and interrupt their life. They don't think that's cool at all. But I said, hey, look, we just were on a podcast with 2 million people and, and the book's selling out and they're charging on Amazon $38 a book. Uh, what are you going to do about it? And he immediately says, well, what do you want me to do about it? I said, I don't know. I said, what are our choices? And he said, that's questions. He said, yeah, well, here's your choices. We can go print them in paperback. That's called POD, print on demand. And there's 11 places and they print one book every six seconds. So we can get it back in stock in three hours. I said, what does that mean? He said, that means your hardbound book is going to compete with a paperbound book, but it's both your books. I said, look, I want everyone to have the book. I'm yeah. sorry that we're sold out, but we've done that now two, three times and had to keep calling them and saying, <laughs> you know, let me go. I'm, I'm competing with myself, which is, Amazing. I, I never expected to do that. Ask and you shall receive, right? If That's you it. Ask, you shall not receive, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Gino, Gino, I need you to wrap this up. And at the end, we need one more, uh, we need more, one more verse. This is going to be here. a challenging <laughs> recap, Jake. I mean, Mark's life has been so incredibly rich from the year age of 21, being able to work with Buckminster Fuller and all the great minds. And from there, I think his journey started about asking and more importantly about surrounding himself with amazing people, people that were smarter, probably shed the ego and said, I'm not as smart as this person, but I need to get around this person. And one plus one is not two. It makes 11, right? Continuing on the path, writing books, starting out the, you know, the chicken soup for your soul, getting the idea to license that book, thinking bigger, that catalyzing statement of the size of your thinking determines the size of your life and pushing on over 500 million books. That's 500 with a lot of zeros. I don't know how many zeros that is. Uh, I, I think it's just an amazing testament to continue to work. And his you know, most recent book that he's written, the book Ask, there's so many golden nuggets in there. And it's just very simple, the titles, three letters. It's A-S-K. And if you don't A-S-K, you will not G-E-T, which is really important. And he has 4,888 contacts in his phone now he's got two more with jake and gino in there so the contact <laughs> list starts to continue to grow and grow and grow and we're just out there continue to ask people don't be afraid it's okay find a partner if you don't have the courage to do it do it for someone else if you're not going to do it for yourself because you deserve to do it for yourself so hey mark Let's get him. I, I need you to ASK so we can get Gino to give us one more little. Come uh, on, Gino. First time. Okay. Let's go. Let's hear first it. First time. Let's hear so, it. Okay. Let me get away from the microphone. Sul mare lucica, lastro d'argento, prospero vita. Is that good, Jake? You like that? It's like two lessons, all right? That's like two <laughs> lessons. Beautiful. You ask. Hey, Mark, we have had a phenomenal time today. Thank you so much, Gino. Let's get you some more lessons, but it sounded really <laughs> nice, my friend. We I'm loved trying, it. Bro. Such a great time today. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for having me on. It's been a delight.